peace and blessings, beautiful souls. I am Brandy L. Bates. Many of you know me as at Soledad Francis on Twitter. You can also find me on Instagram at Brandy is winning. Happy New Year is 2017 and we survived to see another year. 2017, I told you, the year of relentless focus is upon us. This year is about being unstoppable, reinventing yourself. And today, today I'm talking about how to 10X, 20X your overall growth, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. First, understand understand how the world is changing. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. You know, it just it just is. I hear a lot of people say, "Oh, you know, what is this world coming to?" You know, this is happening and they're doing this and you know, they might as well go on ahead and let pedophiles get married now and this and that. You know, listen, it is what it is. There is a shit you can do to change the way the world is 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 shaping and the way the world is evolving and the way society is growing or or uh for some of you who believe it's you know deteriorating but it just is uh if your life your life is gonna change one way or the other it's not gonna stay the same bottom line so we're talking we're talking self-driving cars artificial intelligence and virtual reality y'all virtual reality is really a it's really becoming a thing we're talking about you know they're controlling the weather on on huge huge monumental levels now so understand the world that you once lived in the world that you once resided in and knew has changed so much just in the last Oh, I'd say the last five to ten years. And 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 basically what I'm getting at, what I want you to focus on, is the compound interest on technology. The way things are compounding, meaning this, meaning this. Just 20 years ago, for those of you who are at least 30, um, just 20 years ago, you can see how so many things changed. And it's almost like, I remember when the internet was new, you know. I'm not, let me not date myself, but I, I remember a time we didn't have an internet. There was no Facebook. There was no Twitter. There was no uh, online. There was there were no cell phones, you know, and, and, and once we saw the internet come abroad and, and you know, the internet was, was created or whatnot, right around 2004, 2003, when you know mainstream people started getting online and you know you had you know people getting getting blogs and things like that i'm talking about when it you know got to the laggards or whatnot that's when you really started seeing improvements and you started seeing technology improve and grow at lightning speeds i'm here to tell you how that is going to affect your life you can't even begin to imagine you cannot so don't buck against it, go with it. The world is changing. And how will your life change as a result of this? Will it be for the better or will it be for the worse? You can't, you know, you can't protest your way out of changing your life. You cannot vote your way out of changing your life. You cannot even spend money into change, well, let me let me slow down. Money money solves a lot of things. But I will say this. Real resolve, real resolve, real change, real shift begins within. And sometimes you have to get so fucking pissed off at shit. You know, you have to get so sick and tired of being sick and tired. You have to be so tired of being broke. So tired of being sick. So tired of being fat. Or just so sick and tired of being manipulated or beat up or bullied or stepped on. That's when you say, you know what? No more. This changes today. 
not going back. It stops now. It stops with me. That's when real change happens. Understand, 94% of the 15 million jobs created in the past eight years are either part-time or freelance. I've been saying this for years. We are coming into an era where, listen to me, listen to me closely. A lot of us went to school and got college degrees and owe a lot of student loans for a industry, for a, uh, 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 a job that will not exist in five or 10 years. For many of you, you've already been outsourced. Companies would rather fire you and then hire you back through a temp agency or, or get rid of you altogether and hire two or three people part-time to do your one job. Things are becoming uh, more, things are, things are becoming less part of the big system. You know, and so now you have more small businesses. You have more people doing their own thing out of their home. You, it's the rise of the little guy, the rise of the underdog. Now understand, we still have those huge structures, but the walls are coming down, if you will, if you get my drift. Try to kind of read between what I'm saying because I have to try to cover a lot of ground in a little bit of time. But where do you fit into that dynamic? How will your paradigm, your personal, personal core paradigm shift? Will you reap the benefits of, of this tremendous shift? Or will you be a victim of it? Because you're going to be one or the other. You're either going to win and be all the way up because of it, making more money, healthier, happier, living the life of your dreams, you know, finding your, 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 the, the person who can just put up with all your shit. Whatever you want to call it, you want to call it a soulmate, you want to call it your boo, your bae, your hubby, your whatever you want to call it. You know, I don't like labels because I truly believe labels, labels put us in a box. So don't label me. Don't label me. I try not to label people because who you are today damn sure ain't who you were 15 years ago. And who knows who you're going to be 20 years ago. Yes, your core soul and self remains the same but as you learn and grow and experience and see different aspects of the world you become a different person and you begin to peel off labels and put on new layers of labels so i don't like labels but what do you resolve to do what is your resolve the job landscape is changing corporatism which ruled the world for a hundred years it's ending this era is about the rise of the underdog. We see walls coming down all around us. We're about to witness trillion dollar companies. I mean, really, not just the, the families, the banking families that have always been, you know, the wealthiest, but we're talking self-made, self-made trillionaires. We're going to start to really see that. Um, and as we see wealth going into fewer and fewer hands, you're also going to experience more opportunity. And that's the beauty. I really believe um, that the most high, even in all of the bad, so much good always comes out of it. Now, I may just be jaded. That just may be the way I think. And that is that is why good shit happens for me. Because I truly believe even in the midst of the storm, if I can find my way to the eye of that storm, I'm going to be okay. And I'm going to win. Every time you got a belt, you, you have to bet on yourself and you have to understand and believe that no matter how bad it gets, even if we're looking at the new world order and we're looking at concentration camps and we're looking at chemtrails and being poisoned in our food and our water, guess what? There's still always going to be ways out. There always will be ways out. There always will be methods and tools and resources and things given to you and uh, provided for you to survive and flourish. And so what do you resolve to do? How do you resolve to flourish in the midst of all this change? Uh, we In sports, 
Take sports, for example. In sports, humans are continuing to break goals and do the unthinkable thanks to sports science. Physically, we're growing in ways we never could have imagined a hundred years ago. That's why I tell people, you know what? You don't even know what your limits are. Nobody knows what their limits are. You know why? Because we get right to the edge and as soon as we feel a little discomfort or a little pain, we pull back. You know, we, we, we pull back. There are few people who get to the edge and say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to... I'm just going to fly and see what happens. I'm just going to jump over the edge. So many of us, as soon as we get to the edge, and I mean this in everything, case in point, you know, take a little baby. When a baby is born, however many languages you expose that child to is how many languages that child will speak. So some people say that you'll confuse them. They can only learn one language at a time. No, you'll be confused. You believe you can only learn one language at a time. A child can learn six, seven, eight languages if that is what they are exposed to. There are children in the world who know three and four and five languages by the time they're 10 years old. Why? Because they were immersed in all these different cultures and languages. They can, uh, a child can learn multiple, multiple instruments. We call them prodigies because so many of us live in these little boxes where we believe, oh, I can, I can't learn how to do that. You know, you can't learn but one thing at a time. You can, you can't read but one book at a time. Guess what? You can read 10 books at a time. I do it all the time. You don't have to do shit the way somebody who had limitations taught you how to do it. And that is the beauty of technology and, and, and the, what we're learning about the brain, the human brain and what it is capable of doing. We only use a small percentage of our brain and part part in part it's because yes you know we have certain aspects and vestigial structures within our body that have um they're just dormant because we don't use them but i believe that if you start to push against your edges and push against your comfort zone and push against your limitations you'll start to stretch the shit you're able to do and accomplish you have no idea what you're able to accomplish until you actually put yourself to the fire. And sometimes life will put us to the fire and force us to grow, force us to stretch. And we're pissed off when we go through it, but we're so much better when we come out. And so I'm saying just on your own, start pushing against, you know, what feels normal. Because that's the only way that you'll do the extraordinary. Technology and necessity have taken each industry, destroyed it, and then created a thousand new and different ways to succeed in it. I've talked about it before. You know, how do we have WhatsApp and Uber and, and, and Redbox and Netflix and, and, and whole industries that have been transformed and just imagine how many other industries are gonna also be transformed in this year and the next coming five, 10 years, the next decade, the next century even. I believe it's important to keep your core values as a high priority in your professional and personal life. I've said it before. What are your guiding principles? What are your core values that shape you? Only you can answer that. Meaning every day you're either moving to a better, more cohesive version of yourself and what that person looks like for you by your standards or or you're regressing backwards. And again, your standards, only you can determine what your highest, best, greatest self looks like. What does your highest, greatest, best self talk about, think about? What is your highest, greatest, best self um, accomplish? What does that look like? You're either moving towards that perfect version or you're moving away from it. You may never reach it, but you're either moving closer to it or you're falling back further and further away, but you're never staying still. See, the reason this year is unlike others is that you now have all the tools, resources, and materials you need to be absolutely fucking lootly unstoppable. Also, 
because of the internet and technology. As I've said, the world is a smaller place. You no longer need to beg for approval or, or accept crumbs. You can literally, literally take your destiny into your own two hands. You don't have to, you know, you, 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 you don't have to plead to the government anymore. You know, the man, the king, the queen, or even your parents. You don't even need to pledge oaths to the elite anymore. Or the so-called Illuminati to be, you know, all the way up anymore. We must learn. We must learn something from each and every person we meet or cross paths with. Because everyone is a teacher. Even someone with less education or less means or status can teach you something. Never think you know it all. Never think you know it all. I say it all the time. You know, we think we have it all figured out because, you know, we live in a uh, Western culture with, you know, clean running water and we have our degrees and we have our education and our status and our titles and we drive nice cars and we live in decent housing, you know, uh, and we're able to get on an airplane and fly, you know, a thousand miles or so to wherever we want to go. But how come, how come in all of this, so many of us, not me, not me, but take a good look at yourself, a good look at yourself, how come so many of us are so unhappy or unfulfilled you know and, and and before i look at my life maybe say 10 years ago and i would always ask myself you know i would come across people who were not as smart as me and when i say not as smart as me they didn't have my education uh they didn't read i to this day i still meet people who barely you know graduated from high school they may have some college education or may not they don't read books or anything they're not particularly uh smart or educated but they figured some shit out because they're not having to work for somebody else or they don't have certain relationship problems i would talk to some of my friends and i'd be like you know how come you don't never go through shit like this and now I'm in that position. So when I talk to people and I'm like, you know, I don't have those problems because I learned something to prevent me from having those problems. Now I may have other problems, but I don't have those problems. Whatever your problems are, take a good look at your life. Okay. What are your problems? Are your problems financial? Are your problems physical, mental, are you sick all the time? Do you have an issue with your body uh, uh, that, 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 you know, you may have something going on with your body and the doctors have told you, we don't know what to tell you. You know, there's, there's no cure for this. You know, we don't know what to tell you. You're always tired. You feel run down all the time. You don't know why. I would say find someone with optimal health I mean, optimal health, feel good, look good, you know, never sick. What do they do? What are they doing? You know, genetics aside, you know, it's some shit we just do not have any control over. But I believe even certain genes can be turned on and turned off. In fact, we know this to be uh, just good science. Good biology is that certain genes can be turned on and turned off due to environment. DNA can be uh, turned on and turned off. Certain signals can be rerouted in the circuitry in your brain based on your environment, based on the things that you're exposing yourself to. That is why you can take a child who is born a drug baby, born a crack baby, and take them and put them in a healthy, wholesome, nurturing, nourishing environment. And that, ch and that child can grow to become, you know, a road scholar. That child can grow to become someone who, 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 who discovers algorithms and, 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 you know, discovers formulas and, and writes and creates apps and creates code and shit like that. Because so much of our environment and things like that affect what turns on genetically. But I would say if you have something going on, whatever your major problem is, 
you got something going on physically, get around somebody who can teach you something about solving that physical ailment and being at your personal best physically. You know, a lot of you need, you know, you you, you need to eat better. And you know you should probably eating be eating better. A lot of you may need to try herbs and try Chinese medicine and and, 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 and try different modalities besides uh, the traditional way that is not working for you. Whatever your issue is, your issue may be something mental or emotional. It may be something that's not quite tangible. It might be tangible. You may want a house or you may want a new car or you may want a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend or hell, you may want a child. Whatever your issue is that you were really reaching towards, your resolve, your resolve, you can learn something that is gonna move you closer to that resolution through someone. You just have to stay open to these people that you come across that you cross paths with because everyone who you cross paths with is on purpose and it may not be until much much later in your life that you realize that no one that you cross paths with is by accident some of us call it serendipity you know Oh, that's God or whatever the angels or your higher self or the spirits or whatever your, you know, your ancestors. But every soul that you cross path with is on purpose. There is meaning behind every conversation. There is meaning behind every heartbreak, every trip up, every misunderstanding, every conversation, every debate. There's meaning behind it. Nothing just happens on purpose. Once you understand vibrations and the way um, we are attracted to each other and repelled by each other and the way the higher realm works, even if you don't understand it at its core, you will begin to understand nothing is by accident. So you have to search for the kernel of truth in every circumstance in your world, every relationship, every bad day, Every trial, search for the deeper meaning. The long term, what is the long term takeaway? How will you impact the world today, this year? How will you impact the world? And what will your lasting legacy be? That's that's what this all boils down to. That's what this all boils down to. You can always watch Empire. You can always watch Scandal. You can always watch the game. You can always play that video game. But what is your legacy going to be? What is going to set you aside? If you were to die today, what have you created? What have you sold? What have you birthed? What have you discovered and brought to the world? How have you improved this planet in your little amount of time here thus far? And if you don't like the answers to those questions, what are you going to start doing differently to change that? What do you resolve? Clean up your inner and outer circle because your circle is a reflection of you and also will determine the circumference and many aspects of your outcome, financially, spiritually, mentally, physically. For instance, runners are not linked up with the chronically morbidly obese. They just aren't, they just aren't. And there's a reason. Millionaires, I mean real multi-millionaires are not linked up with the broke living paycheck to paycheck, scratching around for nickels. That's not a roast, it's reality. If you resolve to grow your income, you have a lot to learn in terms of getting into the right circle of men and women who know how to grow income. If that's what you resolve to do, you have to get really, 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 really relentlessly focused on improving your circle first you can read the books 
You can take the classes, but it's the experiences that are really going to put you at the core of what you're trying to achieve. It's the, it's the, it's the experience. Who are the, the emotional gremlins in your life? You know, we all have them. The people and the things that, that take the most from us and deplete us emotionally, whoever they are and whatever they are, you have to root them out and remove them at all costs. Some of you will never improve until you remove yourself from your home environment or, or, or your workplace or gasp <laughs> your mama's house. It might be the relationship you're in and you know it's toxic. You know it's depleting you. You know it's draining you, but you holding on. You hold you got that life support plugged in and you're hoping that that shit's going to come out of a coma and it's not happening. Unplug from the life support and let it go because it's holding you back. And 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 listen to me. Listen to me very clearly. People the emotional gremlins and the experiences, it could be, a, you know, it could be the job you're on. It could be the neighborhood that you're living in. They will hold you back, boo. They will hold you back, baby. And you will look up in 10 years, 15 years while I've passed. And there will be so many things that you have missed out on. So many experiences that you've missed out on. And relationships that you've, 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 you've doomed. And money that you've lost out on because... You're in the wrong environment. And those emotional gremlins have a hold on you. And I think it's crucial to break your resolution into realistic, you know, doable parts. Each day, every single day, you must do something to move you closer to your core values physically, spiritually, financially, and mentally. You can, like I said, you don't even know your limits. And so a lot of times, you know, we'll focus on one aspect. Oh, I got to chase the money. I got to get the money. I got to get the money. I'm going to buy my paper. I got to stack my paper. And then you'll neglect your body. You'll neglect your health. And that's why you have a lot of wealthy, wealthy people who work very, very hard 60 and 70 hour work days, work weeks for years. And then they look up and they have prostate cancer or colon cancer. Or breast cancer. And they and they never got to really travel and see the world like they wanted to. I know people who work so hard for these little houses and, and, and big body vehicles. And they're working so hard to put the kids through private school. And they never get to really enjoy the fruits of all that hard work. And I know some people, they invest all their time in their relationship. I mean, they give their all to their relationship. You, you know, it's me and him. It's me and her. It's about us. It's my bae. It's my boo. It's my bae. It's my bae. Me and bae. Me and bae. Me and bae. And, and, and they all to the detriment of their goals and aspirations. How many of you know you can lose yourself in a relationship? You can lose yourself in another person. And you'll look up. And that person, you know, it may or may not work out. Let's say you guys break up. And you look up. And you haven't accomplished any of the shit that you've been wanting to do. Don't ever lose yourself in a relationship. Don't ever lose yourself in any one aspect of your life to the detriment of all these other aspects of your world. Because you came here for a purpose. And that means doing something that challenges you each day, physically. Because comfort zones are dead zones. And if you invest too much time, again, chasing paper or your job or school and neglect your body temple, it will atrophy. And that's going to become a real problem. But you also have to do something that challenges you mentally. Read something that forces you to open a dictionary. Learn new languages and ways of existing outside of your socioeconomic culture and customs. In other words, get some new friends. Learn to speak a new language. Learn an instrument. Travel to a new country that you've never imagined or dreamed of ever ex experiencing. Do something that challenges your ego, your selfishness, your hangups, and your beliefs. 
And that's a hard one for a lot of people because we don't want to let go of our beliefs. We don't want to let go of the fact that some of the shit that we've been taught is so wrong and false it's not even funny. And I won't even get into that. But what drives you? What splits you into pieces? What fascinates you? This should be at the heart of your resolve and what helps you to get back up when shit in your life cuts you down. I'm, I'm not talking about drugs or alcohol or sex or food because weed can only take you so far. Hennessy can only take you but so far. You can have as much sex until you cannot come anymore. It is not going to feel it's not going to fill that void. And a few of you know what I'm talking about. We all come up against a time in our lives where we hit that. You Let me tell you something. You're going to experience something in your life if you have not already done so. It may be the death of a parent. It may be the death of, God forbid, uh, a, a, a sibling, a brother or a sister. Or your child. It may be sickness or an illness or a car accident. It may be experiencing something that, I mean, shakes you from the foundation. And you're going to need something to lean on that pulls you out of that dark place. And again, it has to be bigger than drugs or alcohol or sex or food or any type of addiction or gambling. You know what I mean? Etc. 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 It has to be something that tugs at your soul. What is your resolve? This is bigger than a podcast. This is bigger than goals and and New Year's resolutions. This is about finding your life's calling and your purpose. So peace and blessings. Have a wonderful rest of your day. See you next week. Bless up.